So hello and welcome to another episode of Top 10s. I'm your interim host, Carl Smallwood, and today we're talking about 10 gruesome murders that remain unsolved. Thanks to advancements in fields like crime scene forensic and DNA analysis, countless murderers are brought to justice every single year. That hasn't always been the case, however, and many gruesome murder cases throughout history have remained unsolved due to lack of evidence or improper investigative techniques. Here are just 10 of them, and the fact that this list could be several hundred items long is already making me kinda sad, and I've not even had my morning coffee yet. I'm filming this at 10 a.m. Speaking of 10, number 10, Jean van Kalk. Jean van Kalk was a nine-year-old girl living with her grandparents in Brussels in 1906. She'd often visit her mother accompanied by one of her grandparents, though on February 7th, she reportedly ventured out alone as her grandfather was working. Sadly, she never made it to her house. A machinist named Josef Eilenbosch had discovered her body in a package. She had been dismembered by the killer with her legs missing and a large quantity of alcohol in her system. The murder of this young girl remains one of Belgium's oldest unsolved murder mysteries. Investigations reveal that Jean had died by choking on her own vomit after being forced to consume vast amounts of alcohol relative to her size. The coroner suspected the murderer had some professional knowledge of amputations, suggesting that he was a doctor or perhaps a butcher. As for the amputations, there was a thorough search for missing legs and they were subsequently found on February 16th in Royal Park. Many suspects were arrested in the aftermath, including a Spanish man, an Algerian man, and a butcher's apprentice named Jean Manin. All of them were eventually acquitted due to lack of evidence, and the case remains unsolved to this day. Number 9. Amber Hagerman. Nine-year-old Amber Hageman was abducted on January 13, 1996 while riding her bicycle near her grandmother's house in Arlington, Texas. A witness saw a man in a black pickup truck snatch her off her bike and she screamed and kicked. Amber's body was discovered in a creek just four miles from the abduction site four days later. The autopsy revealed that she had died from cut wounds to her neck. Despite receiving and investigating some 7,000 tips related to the case, it remains unsolved as of November 2023. The abduction and murder of Amber Hageman inspired the creation of the Amber Alert system the United States, aimed at quickly disseminating information about missing children to law enforcement and nearby families. The system has since saved numerous children from a similar fate across the country. As for Amber, the case remains active even to this day, and the detectives hope that recent advancements in DNA technology and the like could aid in solving it. Number 8. The Boy in the Box Case On February 23, 1957, a college student at the Lassay College in Philadelphia discovered the body of a young boy in the Fox Chase neighbourhood wrapped in a blanket and placed inside of a cardboard box from a baby bassinet. The boy, estimated to be between 4 and 6 years old at the time of his death, had been severely abused and had been dead for several days. His identity remained unknown for over 6 decades and it became widely known simply as the boy in the box. Despite extensive investigations and countless tips, the case remained one of Philadelphia's most enduring unsolved mysteries. In December 2022, however, the Philadelphia police revealed the boy's identity as one Joseph Augustus Zarelli, thanks to newer DNA technologies and detective techniques. While the boy's parents are now long deceased, he still has a few living siblings, and the authorities continue to hope that publicizing his name may result in new leads into the investigation. Number seven, Jean Benet Ramsey. The body of six-year-old Jean Benet Ramsey was discovered in the basement of her family home in December 26, 1966. She had been brutally killed with the autopsy revealing signs of strangulation and a skull fracture, along with signs of sexual assault. Despite investigations and a multitude of suspects over the years, Jean Benet Ramsey's murder remains unsolved, with no arrest made to date. Initially, primary suspects were her parents, Jane and Patsy Ramsey, along with their son, Burke, though DNA evidence in 2008 cleared them of any involvement or wrongdoing. Further testing found an unidentified male's DNA on the victim's clothing. Boulder police and prosecutors have analysed over 1,500 pieces of evidence and interviewed more than 1,000 people so far, though the killer remains at large. Number 6. The Icebox Murders The Icebox Murders refer to a grisly killing of Fred and Edwina Rogers, an elderly couple living in Houston. Their bodies were found by two police officers during a routine welfare check on June 23rd, 1965. The scene, as they later described, was one of pure horror, as the bodies were dismembered, cut up, and neatly placed inside the couple's refrigerator. Edwina had been shot in the head, while Fred had been beaten to death with a hammer before they were dismembered. The killer drained their blood and cut them into pieces before storing the remains in the refrigerator. The primary suspect was the couple's eldest son, Charles Rogers, a recluse who almost never communicated with his parents and was rarely seen by his neighbours. The house had been thoroughly cleaned, but traces of blood were found on the keyhole of Charles's bedroom door. 
Despite a nationwide manhunt, Charles Rogers disappeared and was declared legally dead in 1975. And there are various theories that have come to light since then, with some suggesting that Charles was physically and emotionally abused by his parents, leading to him brutally murdering them. Some think that he fled to Central America after the murders. We simply do not know. Number five, Diane Fossey. Diane Fossey was a primatologist and conservationist working in the remote cabin in Rwanda. On December 26, 1985, she was found murdered in the same cabin with a machete and a small crawl space cut through her bedroom wall being the only evidence to remain. Fossey was known for her work with mountain gorillas as she has spent her life in Rwandan mountains after first traveling to Africa in 1963. She was inspired by the work of Jane Goodall and her research on chimpanzees and after a trip back home returned to Africa in 1966 and established her research camp in the remote mountains. Fossey's murder remains unsolved to this day, though there are some theories that suggest it may have been retaliation from local poachers due to her radical anti-poaching efforts and her knowledge of illegal wildlife trade in the region. However, unfortunately, no evidence to support this has been unearthed and the case remains unsolved. <sighs> I should have started my day with this, but then I didn't want to end my day with it either. That's the thing. So maybe someone can give me some advice on that, because obviously like, I know like presenting is its own art, and I'm not very good at it, I'm trying. Can someone give me some advice for this? Like, what would you do, folks, at home? If you had to, like, cover a topic like this, would you do it at the start of your day so you had the rest of the day to get better? Or would you do it at the end of your working day so you can go and decompress? Because I have more work to do after this, like, including more videos for you guys which deal with similar topics because I've been putting them off for so long. All the topics that I have to do today are, like, people dying, people dying, people dying. I'm like, I know they're good for analytics, but I just don't like doing it. Number four, the torso murders. Just, you know, that's not even nice to say. <sighs> professional, professional car. Between 1934 and 1938, at least 13 people were found murdered in what has now become known as the infamous Cleveland Torso Murders case. The serial killer has also been called the Mad Bookshire of Kinsbury Run, named after the area the murders were committed in, though their true identity remains unknown to this day. They could even just be in your neighborhood. Sorry, humor defense mechanism, I'm sorry. The killings happened during the social and political turmoil of the Great Depression era. The victims were dismembered and decapitated with almost surgical precision. The first known victim was discovered in 1934 with additional murders continuing until 1938. Numerous suspects, including a local doctor and surgeon, Dr. Francis E. Sweeney, were interrogated, though no one was definitively linked to the crimes. However, the killings did stop immediately after Dr. Sweeney admitted himself to a sanitarium. Interestingly, one of the men leading the investigation was none other than Elliot. Ness, the man who famously brought down Al Capone. The completely understandable damage the case did to Ness's mental health, in particular his inability to bring anyone to justice for the crimes, is believed to be a driving force in his descent into alcoholism. Number three, Emily Dimmock. Also called the Camden Town murder, the killing of Emily Dimmock in London 1907 remains one of the city's oldest unsolved murder cases. Her body was found on September 12, 1907 in her flat at 29 St. Paul's Road, Camden Town. Emily, a 22-year-old engaged to Bert Shaw, had her throat cut from ear to ear while she was asleep. The murderer left the scene after the act and locked the doors behind them. Several suspects were tried, including her former associates and a man who had been seen with her in the days leading up to her murder. Despite all of these leads, no conclusive evidence could be found to charge anyone with the crime. And ever since, the case has remained unsolved. Number two, the Villisca Axe Murders. The Villista Axe Murders refers to an unsolved murder case from 1912 when a family of six and their two guests were brutally bludgeoned to death in their sleep in the small town of Villisca in Iowa. The victims were Josiah and Sarah Moore and their four children, and visiting girls Lena and Ina Stillinger. And the incident happened overnight on June 9th, 1912. The bodies were discovered the next morning when Josiah Moore failed to answer a call from his clerk. The killer, or killers used an axe found in the family's own backyard. They left several pieces of evidence on the scene, including raw bacon on the floor, mirrors covered with sheets, uneaten food on the table, and cigarette butts in the attic, though most of it was destroyed by later visits by people in the town. So even back then, people were rubbernecking and gawking at the scenes of crimes. Numerous suspects were investigated over the years, but no one has ever been convicted for the murders. The case remains unsolved and is considered one of the most brutal crimes in Iowa's history. Today, the Moore home in Villisca is considered to be one of the most haunted places in America, and for good reason. A lot of bad stuff went down there. Finally, number one, Elizabeth Short. Elizabeth Short's body was discovered in Los Angeles' neighborhood by a mother and a child on their morning walk, January 15th, 1947. And for anyone who knows the story of Elizabeth Short, you know what the next detail is, and you know that this gets just somehow worse. It was a horrible sight, as the body was cleanly sliced in half and simply left on the sidewalk. The case has since been dubbed the Black Dahlia murder and remains one of the most enduring murder mysteries 
in history. Short was an aspiring Hollywood actress and the body was found without a drop of blood at the scene, indicating that she had been killed elsewhere. She was identified through her fingerprints by the LAPD and FBI. Elizabeth Short's murder case has since inspired numerous books and films, along with countless internet theories and discussions about the true identity of her murderer. Discussions that I don't care to partake in, but I understand there are people out there who do get that giddy little thrill from talking about and learning about true crime. I'll never forget when uh, a, a reviewer, I think they were reviewing like that Dharma show for Netflix, just said shows like this, like true crime is like Marvel movies for wine moms. I've never been able to look at it the same way since. But yes, I hope people found this video to be, I'm not going to say my usual spiel of uh, entertaining, educational, informative, and say I hope you got something from it. Whatever that something was, good for you. And if you did enjoy the video, you can like it, which feels weird to say about a video concerning people dying, but I guess people do find it interesting. History is not always nice and it's important to like, you know, remember it. The old saying, those who don't remember history are doomed to repeat it and all that good stuff. You can leave a comment with feedback suggestions below. In particular, I want to get feedback on my question posed midway through this video of what advice would you give to someone who's presenting a video about topics like this? When would be the best time to present such a topic? Would it be at the start of my day or the end of my day? Because I've tried both and I still come out of it feeling like crap. So any advice on how to deal with that would be greatly appreciated. And I don't want the advice of like try and disassociate from it because I want to feel connected to the content that I make. It's part of the reason why I get up in the morning is because I get to talk about interesting facts and share them with people in the world, which I do on my own channel, Fact Fiend and Wiki Weekends and this one too. But yeah, just sometimes it's a, I wake up and I look at my, my scripts for the day. And I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be what I like to call a four coffee day. But yes, subscribe for more content like this, follow us on social media, and as always, go out there and have the day that you deserve. Cheers.